I'm Toby, and here we are with Richard Buckley at King Richard Serge Bailbrose. But from, from the skeleton, was there a withered hand from which Shakespeare described him as? No, but there was no that's at all for any other abnormality. It's just a spinal abnormality. That was the only one. How long did it take to get permission to actually dig up this car park? Well, I don't claim any credit for that. It's a bit of a language from the Richard III Society. Most of the to the City Council and got them to agree. So it, it took about two years to get the project off the ground. But it's mainly about getting money to pay for the archaeologists and also to pay for the re tarmacking afterwards. Did, did you use um, a ground, ground, ground penetrating radar to scan? We did. Um, the problem in Leicester is that you can't see through the ground very easily to decide where to put the trench. So we tried ground penetrating radar. But the problem with it is it's not very good at recognising things called rubber trenches, which are basically where walls used to be and where all the stones have been removed, just leaving a dark line in the ground. So it couldn't recognise that. So it's very good at finding all the buried sewers and electrical cables, but not very good at finding the archaeology. From, from the start, how long did it take to dig up and find the remains of King Richard III? Well, amazingly, in the first few hours of the first trench, Matthew Morris found the leg bone. But of course it wasn't the right time to dig it then because we didn't know where the burial was in relation to any of the fiery buildings. We had to dig a burial that was inside the church. So it was carefully covered up. And about a week or so later, we then realised that the burial was actually in the choir of the church. And then we did the excavation. And that took about a day to excavate the burial. Um, if you hadn't found his remains, where else would you have gone to try next? Well, we would have done these two trenches. Uh, we were always going to do a third trench in the next door car park. But I think the money would have run out. So we would have stopped and we would have got some interesting information about the priory. Uh, but we, we couldn't really work with trenches anywhere else in the car park because of all the buried services plus the lack of money. What's your personal thoughts on, on if the King Richard III should have a stone slab burial or a raised tomb in Lesser Cathedral? That's a very difficult question, isn't it? <laughs> there are lots of different views. Uh, I mean, the cathedral have published a brief for the new burial, and they've shown some photographs of recent royal tombs, including one of George VI, which is just a flat slab. Uh, there are other people who want this great upstanding tomb as well. Um, I think I personally think you've got to put something that means that the cathedral will still function as a place of worship. And if that means it needs to be a tasteful flat slab, that's fine with me. Do you think history of King Richard should be rewritten? Well, that's another good question because it's whether archaeology can actually answer those questions. Archaeology can tell us about the last moments of Richard's life and how he died and how his body was treated subsequently. But what it can't tell us is anything about his personality. It can tell us, I suppose, the fact that we now know he did have this spinal disorder, and it can tell us that he had quite a strong character and that he overcame that and still managed to fight in battle and become king. But it can't tell us whether he was evil or not. And I, I still sit on the fence. I think um, Richard is probably no different from any other medieval kings who would do anything, anything necessary to consolidate his position as the Queen of England. Thank you. Hello, I'm here with Matthew Morris to ask, ask some questions on King Richard. How did you feel when you first found the leg bone? Um, the finding of the leg bone wasn't that much of a surprise because we were looking for a church, so we knew we were going to find lots of skeletons. Um, so finding one leg bone wasn't particularly surprising. It, was, it wasn't until we actually started excavating the whole skeleton that that was when it got really exciting. What was your most surprising bit about the skeleton? Um, I think it was the curved spine. Um, it's always been thought that Richard Serb's hunchback was a, a made up story. And so to actually find a skeleton that appeared to be of a man who'd been killed in battle, who had a hunchback as well. That was really surprising. With that, we weren't expecting it all. How could you tell it was Richard the Richard Serb's DNA? Um, okay, okay. Um, so we've been doing research on Richard's family, and we've tracked a, a very distant relative of Richard III, who is um, a 17th great nephew of one of Richard III's sisters. And we've compared his DNA with the skeleton's DNA, and they're the same. So we can say that the, the skeleton and this relative are related. 
and then with all the other evidence as well, we can say that this is what you prefer. Has this been one of your best excavations yet? Uh, yes, it's certainly been the most exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a project with this amount of publicity and uh, a sort of that uh, moment where you feel like you're actually finding something significant, very don't take it very often. So yeah, it's very exciting. Thank you.